This video is brought to you by CatBeast.com. Design your own custom snapbacks and hats. On this episode of Off The Script, number 183, part number one, and don't adjust your calendars, motherfucker. I got the right date. August 17th. 2017! I got news! In fact, I don't got news! Why? Because this is the start of your SummerSlam weekend. We're gonna do NXT TakeOver Brooklyn number three preview and predictions right here on the number one fucking podcast right here on youtube.com this is off the script jd from new york 206 it's hopper off the script big show and ryback straw man and roman get off my fucking tv Save me the misery and all you fucking goons Just grab a cold beer The man of the hour is finally here J.D. from New York 206 It's time for off the script J.D. from New York 206 It's time for off the script SummerSlam weekend is here. We're starting early and we're starting on Thursday, man. Welcome to Off the Script episode 183, part number one for your Thursday, August 17th, 2017. We're going to kickstart things today with the NXT TakeOver number three preview and predictions man i want to thank everybody for tuning back into the channel thank you for all your love and support it's been a great week i can't wait for this weekend man i am super excited to get all the festivities underway man there's a lot of stuff going on i've been stressing out about getting all those all these recordings done uh, i gotta get off the script in in its entirety uploaded all weekend so i've been working around the clock to get notes ready record my voice hasn't really felt uh, all that great. I've been doing what I can to maintain that I got a strong, healthy voice for Friday's House of Glory show because I'll be doing play-by-play -play commentary with Mr. Matthew Ryan Shapiro. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, I I've been drinking tea. I've been doing lo lozenges. I I've been doing the, the, the honey and lemon like some of you guys recommended. Um, so hopefully, I feel good now. I, I feel good now. My, my voice is not at 100%. Uh, I would say... It's about at a 90, so I'm going to try and take it easy. I'm going to get all my recordings done uh, for the rest of the weekend, hopefully by mid-afternoon today, and then I can recuperate, relax tonight, uh, maybe do a light stream later, and then uh, tomorrow, man, it's going to be a hectic day. Friday's going to be a hectic day, man. I'm waking up super early, and I'm going to the Barclays Center super early. So I don't know who I know in and around the community, uh, but I will be at the Barclays Center Tomorrow morning for AJ Styles meet and greet. I will be meeting AJ Styles tomorrow. I'm going to ask him how his hair stays so fantastic. I'm going to ask him, uh, please plead with Vince McMahon uh, to not move him to Monday Night Raw and to give us Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles at WrestleMania 34 for the WWE Championship. That's what I want. That's my ultimate dream match under a WWE banner right now with the way things are set up. That's what I want. So it's going to be cool just to meet and greet AJ Styles. I hear that he's, you know, a really, really down-to-earth, really nice guy in person. So uh, I'll be taking pictures. I'll be getting an autograph, I believe, of AJ. And then uh, I will be, hopefully, from there. I know the weather is supposed to be kind of shitty tomorrow. I hope not. Uh, and then from there, I think some of the WWE YouTube uh, content creators for the 2K series... 
uh, is going to be uh, in and around the city. So I'm hoping to just make acquaintances, say what's up, shake some hands, maybe have a cold beverage or four. Um, so uh, those guys might be meeting and greeting somewhere in the city. I don't know where yet. I don't know what's going on with that. But uh, from there, the main event for tomorrow is House of Glory, man. Uh, if you guys are not coming to the House of Glory show tomorrow at the NYC Arena in Jamaica, Queens, New York, man, you guys are missing out on their biggest show of the year. The return of the Amazing Red after two years. He will be in the world title match against Anthony Gangone, current House of Glory world champion. It's going to be fucking phenomenal. Who knows what uh, tricks the Amazing Red is going to pull out of his bag tomorrow night in the main event. We also have Cashflow Ken Broadway. I don't know who he's going up against. Um, just to see him come along throughout the year. I've been doing commentary for House of Glory. It's fucking phenomenal. He is doing big things, and he's got uh, a bright future ahead of him. We got Matt Riddle, the king of bros, going to be making an appearance tomorrow night. He's actually stepping in the ring uh, against Stefan Bonner, UFC Hall of Famer, and runner-up for the first ever Ultimate Fighter, man. He's going to be in the ring. He's actually stepping in the ring for the very first time ever. So that's going to be a highly anticipated match, and I'm going to be looking forward to calling... Matt Riddle's match tomorrow because I've been keeping a keen eye on him for the last couple of months, man. I like his look. I, I like that he's come along in just a short, uh, short amount of time. He's only been wrestling for two years. Uh, so that's just amazing in itself. Uh, I know the WWE has their eye on him. And I know Triple H has made mention of him here and there. A lot of people are saying that he's the next big thing on the indies. Uh, that he deserves a WWE contract, that WWE should scoop this guy up before anybody else does. But I don't know what his intentions are. Uh, if I get a chance to talk to him tomorrow, I'll, I'll, I'll see where he uh, where he's feeling things right now. Uh, I heard a rumor that he might want to go to Japan. That he might want to, you know, dip his hand into the New Japan pool. So I don't know what's going on with that. But Matt Riddle's going to be in action. Uh, we got, uh, what else is going on? We got a tag team title match tomorrow night. The New York Wrecking Crew versus the Super Savages. We got a huge five-on-five uh, big 10-man tag going on, man. It's going to be unbelievable. Uh, we got uh, the House of Gangone, Anthony Gangone's group of guys versus Team House of Glory. Should be fucking great, man. It's going to be a packed house. Come up and uh, greet me with a Guinness, and uh, I'll be your best friend for the entire evening, man. So House of Glory tomorrow night. If you guys want anything to do with House of Glory, please go and watch their Facebook page, man. They upload videos every single week. They get you ready with a beautiful package for high intensity. Uh, we got some clips from the last show that we did, Never Trust the Snake. Uh, that's HOG Live on their Facebook page, just Facebook House of Glory Wrestling. It'll, it'll show up there right in the search. Or if you guys want to go to their official website, you can get all that information, all their social media directly linked through their website. Man, it's HOGWrestling.net. You can even buy tickets for tomorrow's show. That's HOGWrestling.net. High intensity number six. Tomorrow night, meet and greet with Brett the Hitman Hart starts at 6 p.m. I will be there beforehand, and then the event starts at 8 o'clock. Man, it should be a fucking phenomenal evening for the uh, pro wrestling scene right here in New York City, man. House of Glory doing big things, and I'm very, very proud to be a part of their family. If you guys missed anything on the channel this week, Monday Night Raw, SmackDown Live, which was a venomous review of Baron Corbin's failed cash-in. And we got news on Baron Corbin this weekend. The rumors going around... That Baron Corbin is in hot water with Vince McMahon for social media reasons. So he might have fucked himself over. We will talk about that this weekend on Off the Script. Uh, but if you missed the Monday Night Raw, SmackDown Live, NXT reviews, they are all on the channel right now. I even did a live reaction for the roster reveal, part one of WWE 2K18. That is live on the channel right now as well. Make sure you guys go and check that out. Everything you need will be linked within this video in the top right corner of his screen with that little exclamation point, that little annotation. So make sure you guys go and check that out. Follow me on Twitter. It's the best way to keep up to date with the channel because YouTube sucks dick. That's at JD from NY206. We just hit 19,300 subscribers. So we are 700 away from hitting that 20,000 follower benchmark, man. Thank you guys so much for your continued love and support. I'm just a normal goon. And the fact that I got 20,000 people interested in what uh, bullshit comes out of my mouth is just amazing to me. If you guys want to subscribe to the channel, please do so. Thank you to all the newbies who have come over for whatever reason, man. Whatever caught your interest, whatever made you subscribe, thank you guys so much. Uh, subscribe down below and hit that bell and make sure you guys turn on all notifications. Please do so, man, so you guys know when I upload and it is daily. Patreon.com is the best way to support the podcast. If you guys love what I do and you want to support 
even more so than just watching. Patreon.com slash JD from NY206. We got some big things coming, man. We got some big fucking things coming because uh, Mario Kart 8 is something that's been highly, highly requested on my channel. It's coming. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to do it. I'm going to try and get something up just a little bit for, for, for next Monday because I don't want to blow my voice out and you guys want to see me rage on Mario Kart with either Toad or Luigi. I'm hearing Toad is clean and sober now, man. So we got to see what's going on. But Mario Kart 8, one of my most beloved series on the channel, uh, is coming exclusively to Patreon. So if you guys want to see that, it is in the $5 or more tier. All my $5 or more Patreons are going to get Mario Kart 8 gameplay exclusively only on Patreon. And that also includes Off the Script Retro, which I'm currently right now watching the 1992 Survivor Series. That's the last pay-per-view for 1992. Then we'll be hitting the 1993 uh, pay-per-views. Uh, so that is also included. Uh, that's a $3 tier in itself if you don't give a shit about the Mario Kart gameplay. Uh, early access to Off the Script, which you guys will be getting uh, tonight, actually. You guys will be getting part two of Off the Script. This is part one. We're doing things a little bit differently here for SummerSlam weekend. Uh, so part two of Off the Script will be uploaded early for my Patreons. And you guys also get a, a, early access to my Discord Off the Script chat. So if you guys have any interest in any of that, man, Patreon.com is the best way to support the show. Patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Link will be down in the description and there will be a, a little uh, box that pops up at the end of this video if you guys want to go and support. Thank you to all the new Patreons. You guys are getting shoutouts on Sunday's episode of Off The Script, as always, along with the subscriber stories. Also, another great way to support the show is through Audible. All new listeners. So if you guys are, have already cashed in your free book, you are not eligible. So this is for all new listeners, man. And I got a ton of new listeners. So if you guys are new and you're listening to JD and Off The Script, you guys are going to get something for free just for listening today. Audible is offering you guys 30 days free to try their service out with one free audiobook of your choice. All you have to do is use our unique link, audibletrial.com slash off the script, and you guys are going to be on your way to getting one free audiobook of your choice, man. Over 180,000 books to choose from. If you guys got iPhone, if you guys got Android, you guys are good to go, man. So make sure you guys support the show and get something for free while doing it, man. audibletrial.com slash off the script. Uh, thank you guys so much for cashing in on that. I haven't checked the numbers this month, but uh, I uh, have faith that you guys are checking that out and supporting the show through uh, through that and getting something for free while watching. And I just emailed my buddy Connor, uh, the designer of all the t-shirts that you see on the uh, Barbershop Window website, barbershopwindow.com. I emailed him, and I'm like, bro, I want to do something a little bit different. You know, we're, we're going we're gonna to amp up the catalog towards Black Friday, but I want to get at least one new shirt out for you guys. I got uh, another dude working on several other designs and I emailed Connor today and I'm like, bro, we got to get another get off my TV design on the, uh, on the barbershop site. He's like, what do you got in mind? I'm like, uh, I want to give Jinder Mahal his own get off my TV shirt. So I don't know what he's going to come up with, but right now the shirt that's coming will have Jinder Mahal specifically by his lonesome on a new Get Off My TV design, man. Can't wait to see what he comes up with. But Jinder Mahal is most deserving of the Get Off My TV honor. Believe me. Believe me. So that is coming. I will update you guys uh, as soon as that is available. Barbershopwindow.com slash off the script. Use coupon code JD17 for 20% off your entire purchase, man. Enough of me bullshitting. Let's get into the NXT TakeOver preview and predictions. But before I do that, I can't do anything, man, without you guys becoming a little bit more brilliant. Broken brilliance from yours truly, Matt Hardy, man. Right here on Off The Script for episode 183, part number one, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn preview and predictions coming up next right after the broken brilliance of Matt Hardy. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Broken Matt Hardy. This is JD from New York. Actually, delete JD from New York. I am pleased this vessel. Make sure to check out his wondrous show off the script. It's absolutely delightful. If there is one event all weekend long that I am looking forward to most for several reasons, it is NXT TakeOver Brooklyn number three, man. WWE is hyping this up as a homecoming for NXT. A lot of NXT alum, according to Triple H, have asked to be a part of this event. Now, that could mean anybody and everybody, man. 
Finn Balor, Sasha Banks, Becky Lynch, Charlotte. Uh, don't know if she's really going to be there or taking a part in much of the festivities because of Ric Flair, who I'll have news on this coming weekend on Off the Script. Uh, Shinsuke Nakamura, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Neville. Uh, I know Corey Graves has stated multiple times that he's going to be there. Not sure if he's going to have a hand in the commentary. Uh, I wish they'd just get rid of Percy Watson because he sucks. And we can have Nigel, uh, Corey Graves, and the Mora Ronaldo. That, what a fucking trio that would be. Holy shit. But this is going to be a homecoming. And Triple H was on a conference call yesterday. And my good buddy Justin Labar was a part of that conference call. And I was monitoring the conference call and watching his Twitter uh, kind of gauging what Triple H was trying to get across all afternoon this big SummerSlam weekend. He stated that NXT TakeOver Brooklyn is NXT's version of WrestleMania. Now, being that TakeOver in whatever city WrestleMania is in, it's WrestleMania weekend. You know, it's a part of WrestleMania weekend, but this is their biggest TakeOver of the year. So, Triple H is stating that TakeOver Brooklyn is their WrestleMania of the calendar year. It is the end-all, be-all. After TakeOver Brooklyn, they hit the reset button, and then they go through the cycle once again. The new calendar year for NXT begins again. And I think this is going to be a new calendar year. I think a lot of these feuds will end. Uh, new ones will begin. One or two of these might continue on into the next TakeOver. But I'm super excited about this show. I'm super excited about what is to come possibly from this show. And what I mean by that is Adam Cole. I think Adam Cole is going to make an appearance at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. He will be in the crowd just like Bobby Roode was when he made his debut. Right? They showed him uh, at TakeOver Dallas. Um, I think Drew McIntyre, just like what, just like how they did with Drew McIntyre during NXT TakeOver Orlando, he was in the crowd. Uh, I think they're going to do the same thing with Adam Cole. Adam Cole is going to be a big acquisition uh, for WWE. You might not like Adam Cole... Uh, you might love Adam Cole. I think Adam Cole is one of those guys that has the potential to be the face of not only NXT, but he has the talent to certainly be the face of the WWE. I mean, he's got he's got that look. There's something about Adam Cole that just jumps out at me. He's got that it factor. You know, uh, I'm I'm familiar with what he does in the ring. Uh, I'm not all that familiar as some of you guys who regularly watch Ring of Honor or New Japan. But uh, I think Adam Cole does have that it factor, man. I met Adam Cole uh, at uh, WrestleMania weekend um, during Justin Labar's Wing Shack pre-party before he and his crew, uh, his, he and his crew went over to WrestleMania. Um, and I met him. And I took a picture with him. If you guys look at my Twitter avatar, it's me and Adam Cole doing the two sweet. And I told him, the first thing I told him is like, dude, I love how old school your promos are, man. You, you, I love your promo work. And that's the one thing that jumps out at me about you. I think that is going to get him over big time in WWE. There are rumors going around with all the influx of Ring of Honor talent. You know, there's some already there. You got Roddy Strong. You got Cassius Ono, right? And then WWE just signed... Uh, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, uh, Donovan Dijak is on his way into the Performance Center in September. Leo Rush is on his way to the Performance Center in September. Adam Cole is probably going to be a part of that same group, but they're going to showcase him because he is clearly the biggest name out of all those guys that they're bringing in from X ring of Honor. There's rumors going around that there could be a Ring of Honor takeover or a Ring of Honor stable forming in WWE. I am not sure if we will see that uh, at TakeOver Brooklyn. But I do think Roddy Strong is going to be a part of that. I think it's beneficial if he is a part of that. It might get him over more so than if he was on his own. Just by being associated with an Adam Cole, a Leo Rush, a Donovan Dijak. Or if they want to include the, you know, the team of Red Dragon in there as well. I think it's going to be beneficial to him. So there are rumors going around that either Roddy Strong could start the group in retaliation to William Regal and Bobby Roode. And what Bobby Roode has done to Roderick Strong over the last couple of weeks. Or Adam Cole could just come in and, and just take over NXT. You know? It could be his takeover. You know? that They want to they wanna tout that Drew McIntyre wants to bring NXT back to the roots of we are NXT. And Bobby Roode has been on this kick that this is his NXT. Adam Cole can just come over here and 
you know, present himself to the NXT universe and say, fuck this shit, fuck you, McIntyre, fuck you, Rude. I'm taking over this motherfucker. You talk about NXT TakeOver, I'm taking over. And the way he's going to do that is through uh, hiring some of his Ring of Honor buddies. So we don't know what's going on, man. Adam Cole is the biggest piece of news in NXT in the last several months, definitely this summer. His signing has been made official. He will be reporting to the Performance Center uh, this coming September, but he will be. I I'm predicting. You know, we predicted it at Orlando. We predicted it at Chicago. Didn't happen because Adam Cole was under that 90-day no-compete clause for Ring of Honor. I am predicting. Now, three strikes and I'm out, but I have a pretty good feeling that Adam Cole is going to be in the crowd uh, with his girlfriend uh, at TakeOver Brooklyn in the Barclays Center. That's the biggest thing to look out for. Will he play a part in the show? No. I don't think so. He could very well play a part in the show. It'll be uh, super exciting if he does. Maybe hops the barricade and gets gets things going right away. But I doubt it. I doubt it. I think they got something bigger for uh, his introduction on television for Adam Cole. But take over. I'm looking forward to it, man. Uh, NXT as a whole, to me, um, it's been through its ups. We've seen fucking NXT absolutely on fire. Uh, we've seen NXT at its lowest point, you know. Uh, back during the beginning of the year, NXT was at its lowest point, you know. Uh, late last year, around November, December, as we got into December, man, there, there wasn't a lot of buzz around NXT at all because uh, with the departures of a Sami Zayn and a Kevin Owens and a Finn Balor and a Samoa Joe and Bailey and Becky, Sasha, all those, all those big names just were promoted to the main roster, you know. And, and as that happened gradually over the course of 2016, NXT was pretty much gutted. NXT was gutted, man. You know, they took American Alpha. They took the Revival. Uh, Enzo and Cass. Those were big-time players for NXT. I always told you guys to be patient with NXT. I always told you because if there's one thing that I trust in WWE, and nowadays there's not a lot that I trust, I fully believe in Triple H to lead this company into the future. Now, I know there's a lot of reports. There's a lot of fucking podcasts and you know, shoot interviews out there that Triple H is a dick and Triple H is all about himself and, you know, how he buries talent and how he buries personnel. I really don't play into all that. It's interesting to hear, but from what we see on television, I fully believe Triple H is doing amazing with NXT. I love his vision. I love his passion. I love his direction with the company. And it only makes you wonder if Triple H and his team and his people were running WWE as a whole. And it will eventually happen. Triple H is going to be the man to take over this operation when Vince McMahon is no longer there. What his vision is going to be of WWE. You know, we have a lot of problems with the main roster right now. A lot of problems. If we get at least some of that, that NXT does so well on Monday Night Raw, I think things would be a lot better for everybody and we would enjoy the shows a lot more. With what he's doing in NXT, bringing in all these talents, it's fantastic, man. The one downside, the one downside to Vince, uh, to uh, Triple H, rather, uh, you know, working NXT and, and, you know, directing the future of NXT and being in charge of everything down in NXT, uh, a lot of the guys he's bringing in have indie experience, and they're not really building from within. I considered NXT, you know, you know, back in the back in the late '90s, back in the early 2000s, when you know George Steinbrenner was still with the Yankees, he had an open checkbook. You know, I consider Triple H like the George Steinbrenner of WWE. There's a big name out there, free agent, has any buzz around them whatsoever. Triple H is going to bring him into NXT, and I feel like NXT is very reminiscent of the. Late 90s New York Yankees, when George Steinbrenner uh, would get wind of a free agent out there, highly sought after free agent, he'd open up his checkbook, issue him a $150 million contract, and bring him on into the Yankees, uh, because George, George Steinbrenner, the only thing on George Steinbrenner's mind was winning. He didn't give a shit. And at that time, their farm system, the Yankees, was, was god-awful. The Yankees always had a terrible farm system. In fact, to me, they still have a terrible farm system. There's a few gems here and there, uh, a.k.a. Aaron Judge, who came out of nowhere seemingly and is fucking, uh, you know, blasting the American League with 35 home runs this season. Probably going to end up with 50. But 
I think NXT is like the Yankees of the late 90s, man. They sign everybody, they scoop everybody up, and instead of uh, building from within or building through the performance center or their farm system, they'd rather just get the hired gun, the handyman who's got five to ten years' experience, and bring them on into NXT. You know, that's great for now, but how is that going to be uh, good for the long-term future of, of the performance center? There's not a lot of guys on the NXT roster that are built from within. You look at the main roster right now for NXT... Uh, a lot of those guys are from other promotions. Uh, you don't really have many from the Performance Center. You know, you got the Authors of Pain. You got uh, the Velveteen Dream, right? And that's really all I can think of right now off the top of my head, uh, being that I got the record button going. Those are the only ones that I could think of right now that came from the Performance Center. You look at this entire card. You look at this entire card of five matches, everybody was from another promotion outside of the tag team title match. Authors of Pain were built from within. Some of Sanity were built from within. Alexander Wolfe uh, is the only one. You know, Killian Dane from another promotion. Eric Young from another promotion. Nikki Cross from another promotion. They were not built from within. Alistair Black, Hideo Itami, Johnny Gargano, Andrade Cien Almas, Bobby Roode, Drew McIntyre, Asuka, Ember Moon. You know? That's the only negative to what Triple H is doing. He's, he's relying too much on free agent signings and not building from within. That's the only thing that I see. But that does not make NXT's future uh, any less promising. The, 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 the NXT future right now, the future of NXT is more promising now than it has been in the last couple of years, man. Uh, they are absolutely on fire. They're doing everything right. And this is the highest NXT has been interest-wise, since we've seen the likes of Balor and Owens and Zayn all on the same roster. You know, what? right when Balor was there as NXT champion, they were absolutely on fire. They were hottest brand in the fucking world. NXT is going to get back to that status by the end of 2017, believe me, because there's more coming in. There's more coming in. I'm excited for the future of NXT. I'm excited for Saturday, and everything that they've been doing this summer, man, has been absolutely fantastic. I can't say anything wrong about NXT uh, besides what I just mentioned to you here uh, with Triple H and what he's doing operation-wise. So NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, man, it's got five matches, five matches. And the big one, obviously, is the NXT Championship match with Bobby Roode and Drew McIntyre. Now, Bobby Roode has been fantastic in his run as NXT Champion. I love what Bobby Roode has done. I love how manipulative he's been. I love the fact that this is his vision of NXT. This is his NXT. Drew McIntyre came in, you know, he came in with all this buzz, kind of died off a little bit. They're trying to rebuild that, and it really hasn't gotten to where it needs to be, okay? Drew McIntyre was a WWE talent that they let go, and they let fucking just die early on in his run. They released him. He went to TNA, he became a superstar, and now, being that he is who he is today, WWE realized, look, look at this guy, man. I don't know how we let this guy go. We gotta get this guy back. I'm happy he came back to NXT. I, I, I'm happy he came back home to the WWE. After what he's done on the independent circuit and in TNA, there's no reason uh, to believe that Drew McIntyre doesn't have a, a fucking bright future in the WWE. But the buzz around Drew McIntyre right now is just not there. It's not there yet. Do I see him as an NXT champion? Yes. Do I see him being an NXT champion by the end of Saturday night? No. And I will tell you why. And I stated this about many other talents spread across the WWE roster. Bobby Roode is the best at what he's done. Bobby Roode is the number one man in that company. Right now, there is no one that is even on his level. Why would you take the title off of Bobby Roode only to put him on the main roster with no direction whatsoever? Bobby Roode has a good thing going right now. Plus, you got the wild card of Roderick Strong. How he's going to fit into all these plans, nobody knows. Roderick Strong is definitely going to have a hand in this main event. Okay, Bobby Roode on the go-home show wanted Drew McIntyre and Roderick Strong to fight. He gave William Regal the push to sign this match between McIntyre and Roderick Strong. Roderick Strong says it's not about the title anymore. 
It's about me getting my hands on you and getting my revenge because you made fun of me. You downplayed me as a man. You made fun of my kid. You made fun of my fiance. I want you. It's not even about the title anymore. So Bobby Roode said, listen, I would even put the title on the line. I will put the title on the line if you can beat Drew McIntyre on the go-home show. Now, Bobby Roode said that he would put the title on the line. Uh, who knows if he's going to be champion? You know, you're watching that, and, and you're thinking, well, he's got Drew McIntyre. So he's all automatically dismissing Drew McIntyre as a credible opponent. He's already thinking that after takeover, he's going to be the world champion. So he stated that he would put the title on the line again against uh, Roderick Strong. But Roderick Strong, in his match with Drew McIntyre, uh, little did he know that Bobby Roode was just fucking with him. Bobby Roode came in, attacked both Roderick Strong and Drew McIntyre, and laid both of them out. He laid McIntyre out with a glorious DDT. And he said, uh, you know, Roddy, this is my NXT. Drew, this is my NXT. Blowing kisses at Roderick Strong, saying that he got one over on him. You know, he's still just a, a second-rate uh, B-level talent. Yes, Drew McIntyre looked weak going into TakeOver Brooklyn. All the more reason why I don't think he's going to win the title. I think this match between Root and McIntyre is going to focus around Roderick Strong. I think Roderick Strong is going to be the center of this conclusion. I think Roderick Strong is going to fuck over Drew McIntyre unintentionally. Because Roderick Strong just wants Bobby Roode. I think that anger, that frustration is going to cause him to do something stupid where he fucks over Drew McIntyre uh, because he wants to get his hands on Bobby Roode so badly. I think Bobby Roode walks out of the Barclays Center, still NXT champion. I think we see a glorious DDT, but it's something that Roderick Strong is going to cause. Something that Roderick Strong is going to do to cause Drew McIntyre a loss on Saturday night. Bobby Roode's going to walk out the NXT champion, retain the title. There's no reason why Bobby Roode should lose the title. He's got a great thing going. There's nobody next in line right now, so there's no reason for you to take the title off Bobby Roode. Once you have a definitive feeling that you have the next man to replace Bobby Roode at the top of that card, that's when you make the switch. That's when you pull Bobby Roode from the world title and you start thinking about what to do with him on the main roster. Right now, there's nobody. Drew McIntyre certainly could be that guy, but he hasn't been built up yet. You're not going to give Drew McIntyre the title when right now he's kind of lukewarm. He's not scorching hot yet. They haven't built him up to that point yet. No reason to put the title on him. Bobby Roode walks out. NXT champion still. Bobby Roode, Drew McIntyre will continue on into the next pay-per-view, the next TakeOver event, where I think in November around Survivor Series, we will see Drew McIntyre reclaim that NXT World Championship. Same thing goes for the next match, man. Asuka versus Ember Moon. Something that has almost divided the NXT faithful. I'm going to say the same thing I said about Bobby Roode. Asuka, in a weak division right now, and I I'm talking about right now, with the Mae Young Classic, obviously that's going to change because more than half of those women are going to be signed to WWE contracts. Some of the women on NXT's roster right now might get moved up, a.k.a. Billy Kay, Peyton Royce, Liv Morgan. Um, so a lot of those Mae Young competitors, Mae Young Classic competitors, are going to get signed to NXT and they're going to report to the Performance Center in September. Asuka right now is head and shoulders, leagues above, Everybody, including Ember Moon, on that women's roster. Why would you take Asuka away from that position only to put her in something that is unimportant, stale, formulaic, and repetitive on the main roster? The way I look at it is, do you want Asuka to be eh, lukewarm on the main roster, or do you want her to remain scorching hot in something great in NXT. Nobody is on Asuka's level. When she states that nobody is ready for Asuka, it's not just a catchphrase. It's the truth. Nobody is ready for Asuka. Ember Moon is not ready for Asuka. If you ask me, I love Ember Moon. I honestly think Ember Moon is great. I love what she does in the ring. I think she's attractive. I think she's got the look. She's got the appearance. She's got the character. She's got the, the theme. She's got the entrance. Everything about Ember Moon is great. She's got a ton of positive and only a few negative. But the negative that I see coming out of Ember Moon right now, when you listen to this woman speak, 
I don't know what it is, man, but somebody in the back in NXT, somebody in a high position has to work with Ember Moon on her promo ability, man, her promo skill. It is awful. It is absolutely awful. When she speaks, it doesn't fit the character. I see someone who comes out uh, looking like a hunter of the night. I see the red eyes. I see the fucking hood. Like she's going to fucking sink her teeth into somebody and suck somebody's blood. That's what I see when I, when I look at Ember Moon. And then when I hear her speak, all of that goes away. All of that goes away. When Asuka comes to the ring, when Asuka speaks, when Asuka delivers in the ring, it all matches her character. And that's why she's been champion for 500 fucking days. 500 days. You don't do that on accident. Okay? That, that was not an accidental 500 days. WWE seen what they had in Asuka, and they pushed her and booked her to a 500-day title reign. Is Asuka's title reign of 500-plus days worth just risking and throwing away for Ember Moon when Ember Moon is not ready? And the way I look at it, I want you guys to go back about a month when Ember Moon was injured, right, and just making her comeback, and Asuka was being put in a last woman standing match with Nikki Cross. If you ask me, Nikki Cross is above Ember Moon on the women's scale in NXT. Nikki Cross was the only one in 500 days to even come close to beating Asuka in a last woman standing match. She brought Asuka to the brink of defeat. She was this close. She was a concert away from beating Asuka. The only woman to do so in 500 days. That close. You mean to tell me you're going to look at that match and then look at Ember Moon and think... Ember Moon has a shot at Asuka if Nikki Cross couldn't get it done with all that she did in that last woman standing match. Now, to me, that's just common logic. To me, that's common sense. The answer is no. The answer is no. If I was WWE, if I was Triple H, if I was NXT, Asuka would remain undefeated. Asuka would still have her title reign of 500 days and counting. And then, with the Mae Young Classic, if... If you want to throw around the idea, if you want to toy around with the idea of actually beating Asuka and then promoting her to the main roster, I think the winner of the Mae Young Classic is going to be looked upon as a huge star. And I'm telling you right now, Kyrie Sane is going to win that tournament. There's no doubt in my mind that Kyrie Sane is going to win that tournament. Kyrie Sane, if they want to toy with the idea, should be the one to beat Asuka at TakeOver in November. And then you move Asuka up after that. If you don't want, which I would prefer this second thing to happen, I would have Asuka make her main roster debut after TakeOver Brooklyn number three, and I would have her make her main roster debut the NXT Women's Champion. Why the fuck not? Kevin Owens did it. Kevin Owens was on the fucking main roster for two months before he lost the NXT Championship to Finn Balor. He was feuding with John Cena while he was the NXT Champion. So why can't Asuka do the same thing? At that point, I would either have Asuka relinquish the title, and then you have another NXT tournament with the women that you develop out of the Mae Young Classic mixed with the women that you have in the Performance Center down at NXT already, and you have an eight-woman tournament, and you crown a new champion at TakeOver in Houston for Survivor Series. That's what I would do. I think the money here is having Asuka remain undefeated because something like this does not happen. On accident. You got this 500 day streak. Why would you relinquish that and give it up for Ember Moon when we all know Ember Moon hasn't even come close to anything Asuka is? I would have Ember Moon defeated here. I would have her pinned. I would have Asuka retain. I would have Asuka either make her main roster debut as NXT Women's Champion, just pushing everybody's shit in on the main roster, relinquish the title, and remain undefeated until WrestleMania when you have Asuka versus Charlotte at WrestleMania 34 for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. That's what I would do. That's my idea of Asuka. And even then, I would have Asuka remain undefeated. I would have Asuka be the most dominant female in all of WWE history. All of WWE history. Because a talent like that and a streak like that does not come by accident. Asuka is too good. She's done something that no other woman on this roster right now could even come close to. I think she beats Ember Moon. I'm going with Asuka to retain. Asuka is the right idea for NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. Asuka retains beating Ember Moon. 
And that is what I got to say about that. NXT Tag Team Championship match. The Authors of Pain, Akam and Razar, with Paul Ellering defending the titles against Sanity, Alexander Wolfe, and Killian Dane. Eric Young is back with Sanity. Nikki Cross will be present at ringside as well. Um, I just don't see the Authors of Pain losing to Sanity. Now, if I was booking this match and this happened a couple of months before, I would say, yeah, I think Sanity should win the Tag Team Championships. But being that the Authors of Pain just disposed of Heavy Machinery pretty easily, um, I don't think Sanity's even going to come close to winning the Tag Team Championships, nor should they. The Authors of Pain are a very dominant team. Uh, Sanity has gotten the best of Authors of Pain. They really haven't retaliated against Sanity yet, so I don't see the Authors of Pain dropping the titles at TakeOver. The tag team division as a whole is, right now, not looking good for NXT. It's got uh, a promising upside. I mean, it's not down in the dumps irreparable. But you got the Authors of Pain, you got Sanity. Uh, I'm really liking the Street Profits. I don't know if you guys have been watching. Street Profits are really, really good. They got an energy that is infectious. And I think they could be very, very good for the NXT tag team division. You, you got to keep in mind that Red Dragon probably is going to get back together. In NXT, Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish, they're probably going to be a dominating stable, uh, a dominating group, I should say, in NXT. There's no there's no reason to believe why NXT wouldn't pair them together. I don't see Bobby Fish doing much of anything on his own. Kyle O'Reilly's obviously got the most upside. He's the younger of the two as well. Bobby Fish is like 38. Kyle, O'Reilly, Kyle O'Reilly's barely in his 30s. You know, so uh, I think pairing them together for the time being is the best thing for both of those guys. TM61 is on their way back, hopefully by uh, by September, October. TM61 will be back. I know Shane Thorne had a pretty nasty injury, tore his knee out, blew his knee out. He'll be back. And, and then from there, you can just, uh, you know, you can say that NXT's taking division for a one-hour show every week it is much better off with those teams being back and included than where they are right now. Plus, you got heavy machinery. Uh, I, I'm hearing War Machine could come on in. You know, what, what a fucking colossal matchup that would be. If the Authors of Pain are still your NXT Tag Team Champions, then they start feuding with War Machine. Holy shit. You know, that's a team I could see take the titles from the Authors of Pain. That's a dominating fucking team right there. But back in the day, I don't know if you guys remember me saying, with the debut of Sanity and Eric Young, I thought Eric Young was going to be one of those components that was going to be in and around the, the main event level scene of NXT. I thought Eric Young could have... Uh, a uh, possible NXT championship run. Nikki Cross, women's championship run. Sanity with uh, Sawyer Fulton before he got hurt. Now with Killian Dan and Alexander Wolfe, even more so. Possible tag team title reign. I thought Sanity was one of those groups that was going to hold all the gold in NXT. And, and be one of those dominating duos that we haven't seen in a very, very long time on WWE television. Now, I don't really think that way about Sanity. They're, they're still a solid group of guys and female. But I don't see them winning this match. I don't see them being as dominant as they once were. You know, with the landscape changing in NXT, I don't think Sanity is really going to be much of anything going forward. I think they're they're at where they're at, and I think they're going to stay there. Authors of Pain, Akam and Razor, I think they will they will retain. Uh, so, just by that fact alone, I know the last couple of takeovers there has not been a title change outside of the UK Championship. Which, speaking of that, I don't know why that match isn't happening on this show again. I'd love to see in New York City, Tyler Bate versus Pete Dunne again. I don't know why they didn't book that match. Uh, I guess they could if they want to do uh, an unexpected surprise. I don't know why they didn't book that match. I'd love to see Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate. They have the match. They have. They right now have the match of the year for for uh, for NXT at that takeover event in Chicago. But this would make another takeover event where a title does not change hands, and I am okay with that. I am okay with that. Why take the titles? Off of the current champions right now. If it doesn't make any sense. If it doesn't make sense. When it makes sense. Then yes. You take the titles. Off of your current champion. There's nobody better than Bobby Roode. There's nobody better than Oscar. There's nobody more dominating. Than the authors of pain. It makes no sense. So don't do it. Don't do it for the sake of just doing it. When you have a piece. That is ready to move up and replace your current champions. Then you make the change. Until then, no. The titles, honestly, 
just a little side note here, the titles honestly look more prestigious and they look more important when you have a reign like Rude, when you have a reign like Asuka, when you have a dominating team like the Authors of Pain. That's just my opinion on that. Authors of Pain beat Sanity. They retain the tag team titles of NXT. This is where it gets a little bit tricky, man. These two undercard matches could go either way, to be perfectly honest with you. Aleister Black, who to me has absolutely one of the biggest upsides to anybody on NXT's current roster. Aleister Black will be a future NXT champion. He's got the hype. He's got the look. He's fucking sought after by everybody, man. NXT is pumping out talent left and right. Triple H said on the conference call yesterday, Vince McMahon regularly asks him about NXT talent. Vince McMahon asks, asks is Triple H, uh, when can I have this guy? How far along is this guy? And I'm definitely, 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 I w if I was a betting man, I would bet that Aleister Black is amongst those names that Vince McMahon is looking at, asking when he is ready. He's not ready yet. Vince, he's not ready yet. And no, you're not putting him on 205 Live. Aleister Black has the biggest upside to anybody on NXT's roster right now. If there is a man that is coming along and I would say he's coming along faster than Drew McIntyre. I'd say he's farther along than anybody in that main event scene. If you wanted somebody that is potentially the next in line to take the world title from Bobby Roode, I would say Aleister Black is that next man. I think Aleister Black is fantastic. He's got the look. He's got the in-ring ability. He's got the entrance. He's got the hype around him. He's got it all. He has it all, man. Aleister Black versus Hideo Itami. Hideo Itami... Just recently turned heel. Just recently turned heel. We got this new aggressive attitude from Hideo Itami. And, 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 and Hideo Itami has been the victim of stop and start pushes. He's been the victim of fucking injury. He's been on NXT's roster for three years. Uh, two of those three years has uh, been plagued with injury. So he's come back and it's just like, fuck, he's like a fish out of water, man. You know, he doesn't fit anywhere. If he wasn't hurt, he'd be multi-time NXT champion. He might be on the main roster by now. But there's nothing you can do about the injury bug, you know. It was going to happen. You get hurt, you're out for a year and a half, and you try and come back and find that place where you once were. It's not going to happen right away, man, because the entire landscape has changed in a year and a half. There's new faces. Things are done differently. Now, finally, I feel that Itami is where he should be. I think Itami is in a role that best suits him as a heel, right? But now, I mean, you could even state on Saturday night he's in a fucking, you know, wrong place, wrong time situation again. What do you do here? Aleister Black is your biggest fucking prospect who's been undefeated, you know, and they pushed him to the moon. They, they, they have him going out there squashing people left and right. With Black Mass coming out of nowhere. Black Mass, Aleister Black's finishing move is like the new RKO, man. It literally comes out of nowhere. What are you going to do? Hideo Tommy on Saturday night is in a wrong place, wrong time situation. Again, once he starts getting going, he's got another proverbial wall right in front of him. And he can't continue that momentum. It starts and then it stops. It starts and then it stops. It's starting and it's going to stop with Aleister Black again. Or is it? Aleister Black has had impressive victories the last couple of weeks over Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. Kyle O'Reilly brought Aleister Black to his toughest match yet. 25 minutes those two went a week ago on NXT's main event. Fantastic match. I highly recommend you guys go back and watch that. But Aleister Black pulled out a victory. Black mass out of nowhere. Do you have Aleister Black, being that he's fucking mega hot right now, do you have him lose? To Hideo Itami, do you finally give a fucking bone to the newly turned heel Hideo Itami? Who needs it more? Who needs it more? I'm going on a bold prediction here. I'm making a bold prediction. I'm going with Hideo Itami. I think Hideo Itami gives Aleister Black the go to sleep, and I think Hideo Itami beats Aleister Black at TakeOver, shocking everybody because he needs it more. And Aleister Black, if he suffers one loss, it's not going to do anything to him because he's already proven himself. He already has that, that feel that everybody fucking loves. It's infectious. People want to see him. I think a loss here is not going to do anything to Aleister Black. I honestly think people will still feel the same way about Aleister Black if he loses here to Hideo Itami. I think I'm going to see him go to sleep. 
I think we are going to see Hideo Itami win. And I think Hideo Itami needs it more than Alistair Black. Itami beats Black at TakeOver Brooklyn on Saturday night. You could probably say the same thing about this match, man. This is probably the one match I'm looking forward to most. Because I think this match is going to fucking tear the house down. To be honest with you. I love Johnny Gargano. I love Johnny Gargano. Can you imagine? If Tommaso Ciampa was not hurt, what match we would get from those two on this show. My God, if you thought their match at the Cruiserweight Classic in the first round of last year's tournament was great, I thought they would have blown everybody's expectations away, including that match. That was one of the best matches of 2016. There's no doubt in my mind they would have done the same thing here. Andrade Cien Almas is not a bad substitute. Andrade Cien Almas is another one who's had these stop and start pushes. But this time, he's with Zelina Vega. Andrade Cien Almas was one of those talents that had everything you needed out of, pro, out of a pro wrestler in that ring. The only thing that Andrade was suffering in was that it was difficult for him to keep the fans and the crowd attention. Nobody cared. They tried multiple things. He came out as Mr. Stripper Graham. He came out looking like a fucking uh, uh, a stripper, wearing the overalls and the top hat. He looked like Mr. Pretty Boy. Now he's Mr. Pretty Boy, who wants to fucking have a different girl on his arm every week, and now he's got Zelina Vega to set him straight. The party boy ways go away when Zelina Vega is there because she yells at him, she gets him right back in line, and she gets him right back on what is most important, that is winning. And the fact that she's attractive and that she adds that nice little aspect to his act is all the more reason for, for people to pay attention to Andrade Cien Almas. They want to see Andrade Cien, uh, they want to see Andrade Cien Almas, but they also want to see Zelina Vega. And if Zelina Vega is associated with Andrade, they're going to make... Or you're going you're gonna to feel like you need to see Andrade because Zelina Vega is there. And I think right now, Johnny Gargano, yes, after coming back, you know, from the huge beatdown that Tommaso Ciampa gave him at the end of TakeOver Chicago, he's got the new theme, he's got the new attitude, he, you know, this is about Johnny wrestling, he wants to make his mark, he wants to make his stamp in NXT. Johnny Gargano is beloved by everybody. I'm not going to think any differently of Johnny Gargano if he loses here. I think Johnny Gargano is the biggest thing or the closest thing to a Daniel Bryan character that WWE has. He sells amazingly. You know, he just makes everything fucking believable. Johnny Gargano just pulls out something from his bag of tricks that just makes you want to see him win. He gets beat down. He makes it fucking believable. He develops some type of fucking sympathy for himself in the match to the point where you want to see him overcome everything every single time. I love Johnny Gargano. I am not going to think any differently about Gargano if he loses here. In fact... I don't think Johnny Gargano needs to win this match. I'm going with Andrade. I'm going with Andrade because they just repackaged him with Zelina Vega. And I think Zelina Vega is going to lead Andrade, Andrade Cien Almas to a victory here. I think he needs it more. Who needs it more? Does Johnny Gargano need it? No. Like I said, we're going to feel the same thing about Johnny Gargano when we see him next week on NXT TV. Who needs it more? Andrade has just been repackaged. He's got a new attitude. He's got a new beautiful manager with him. Why would you have him lose in his first big-time match after he was the one who initiated the challenge? Or actually, she initiated the challenge. I think Zelina Vega is going to lead Andrade to that next level. I just see it happening. I think he needs it more. Enough with the stop and start pushes. You got to go and, and go with the, the momentum. Give Itami the win over Aleister Black. Give Andrade the win over Johnny Gargano. I'm going with Andrade with Zelina Vega to, de to defeat Johnny Gargano on Saturday night at TakeOver Brooklyn 3. And that is your card, man. If if I was NXT, I would add another fucking match to this show. I would add Tyler Bate versus Pete Dunne, but I don't think they're going to give you an unadvertised uh, United Kingdom Championship match. I think the night is going to be full of surprises. I think it's going to be full of excitement. I can't fucking wait for it. Uh, Brooklyn is going to be hot. They're going to be on fire. And this show is going to deliver, man. I can't wait for it on Saturday night. And I hope you guys enjoyed my preview and predictions of NXT TakeOver Brooklyn number three. I am JD. If you enjoy the video, hit that thumbs up. Let's strive for 1,200 thumbs up on this video. Make sure you guys leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys are thinking. If you agree with me, if you disagree with me, follow me on Twitter. Become part of Team JD at JD from NY206. If you guys want to support the channel, patreon.com slash JD from NY206. Barbershopwindow.com slash off the script. Coupon code JD17 for your t-shirts at checkout. You guys got audibletrial.com, all new listeners, audibletrial.com slash off the script. Use that link and get one free audiobook on me just for listening today. 
and then capbeast.com. Make sure you guys go to capbeast.com if you guys want custom-made hats, caps with your own custom-made embroidered logo, man. Uh, I'm hooking you up with more discounts. JD10 at checkout on capbeast.com. I am JD. Thank you guys so very much for the video. Remember to hit that thumbs up, and I will see you guys right back here on part two Friday. Two hours of Summer Slam preview and predictions. I am JD. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you all Friday morning with part two of this weekend's huge off the script this SummerSlam weekend. I'll talk to you guys later.